Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and I have a uh, small announcement with enormous ramifications, I suppose we could put it, and that is that Godot 3.4 Beta 2 was just released. Now this release is, uh, first off, it might be a little confusing because you may not have heard about Godot 3.4 Beta 1. Well, the truth of the matter is, if you head on over to the Godot Engine blog, uh, you'll find some details of that. They never actually had a formal release of Beta 1. Uh, because there was a C-sharp support on Windows regression, a major thing, so they never posted a blog post on it. It was available, it just wasn't publicly announced. So thus, we are on Beta 2, and of course, hopefully that regression is now fixed. Uh, but we have a number of other features in this particular release. We'll come back and look at them in a second, but I want to focus specifically on one major new feature of this release, and that is if you head on down here to Rendering you're going to see one of the most requested features for the Godot game engine, and that is a thing called occlusion culling. Now, if you've never heard of it before, occlusion culling is basically a way of splitting your game's data into that which is currently visible or potentially visible and everything else. So by having it deal with only the small subsection of renderable things in the world, you could speed all kinds of things up, including uh, actually the animation systems. So right now, the animations will run on every single thing in your scene. With occlusion culling, you can have it break down to just what is currently potentially renderable. And the way that this is implemented, the occlusion culling itself, is via a system of rooms and portals. And we're going to look at the details of that in just a second. First, a little tidbit I just learned, and this is interesting. The word occlusion actually comes from Latin, the word occluder, uh, which is oculus, and that actually means to shut up added to the ion, which is the English uh, word for the being in the state of. So occlusion literally means to be to shut up. I love that. Uh, it, it's, it's a great little tidbit of fact. By the way, the word culling is probably one you know. Basically, you call something by getting rid of it. So um, you call off if you've got dead flowers in a flower garden, you would consider culling those. Uh, it, it's basically to prune off that which you don't need. So you've got those two words put together. Basically, an occlusion calling algorithm is something that gets rid of everything that isn't directly relevant. And so this is obviously a optimization trick because then you can focus on only the data you particularly care about. And the end result should be speed. Now, I've got to warn you right up front, though. This is not going to be... Um, a freebie. This is something that you have to implement yourself, and it's not simple either. So this is an advanced level feature, but it is coming in Godot 3.4, and I'm a little shocked by that. So you can see here, it is a mostly static system. That means when things move around a lot in your level, you're going to have some problems, although you have the ability to open and close portals, and you can move them. Rooms portals work particularly well for indoor environments, environments that have been sensibly made to take advantage. Uh, so kind of think of your world in things that you can break it down into discrete chunks. When, those, when you can define what those chunks are, occlusion calling works really well. So if you're in an indoor environment, so you've got, you know, uh, a floor, and then you got an elevator, and then another floor. It gives you a nice way to break it down so that one floor could be uh, an area, and then, you know, each kind of... Um, room within that floor would be a room, and so on. So this is all implemented using a series of uh, four new objects or four new nodes that have been added to the Godot game engine. Uh, and those nodes are room, room group. So again, you can have room being the rooms on a floor, room group being the um, selection of uh, all of the floors together to make a level. Uh, portal being ways to go from one to the other, and then you've got the room manager, which ties it all together. So this could be uh, your elevator, for example, um, and that's a way of logically breaking down indoor levels, at least, into when you're dealing with large, sprawling environments, things like uh, GTA or outdoors and Fortnite, that kind of stuff. Those are not obviously good for a portal room-based system because you're not organizing your level into those things. By the way, this is all also completely optional, so if this isn't for you, don't worry, you don't need to use this. Uh, there are some caveats. Rooms need to be run through a conversion phase, either using the editor plugin or from a script before the portal calling can be active. Everything is shown in the 3D view. Currently, the gizmos are rigged to show up, but the grid is not. Uh, you can activate and deactivate the system in the editor. And at the moment, the VVH slash octree, those are the actual data structures that hold the level data in the game. Um, runs in parallel and is still used for pairing. Portals are used for callvex halls only. Um, each visual instance has a new portal mode property in the inspector. Uh, so these are under visual instance itself. It's like so. So you see portal mode right there. You've got static, dynamic, roaming, global, and ignore. So that is built in at the visual instance level. Visual instance is basically anything that's drawn in the editor um, or in your game world. Uh, so you've got uh, broken down, again, rooms, portals, uh, sprawling, um, 
that being things that can uh, span for various different portals. Uh, you can see some and more data of it in set, uh, PVS. Uh, I think I've mentioned that earlier on. This is the potentially visual set. So like I'm saying, this isn't occlusion culling isn't going to get you down to just what is on screen. It's going to get you down to what is potentially on screen, which is still a huge savings, by the way. Um, so in addition to basic portal culling, Cisco can optionally build a potentially visual set during conversion. For each room in the level, a list of all the rooms that can possibly be seen from this room is calculated using the portal geometry. Has a number advantage. It's very fast at runtime. Enables some very useful runtime functionality like gameplay monitoring. Uh, main disadvantage is it only works well with static level layout. Uh, so if you've got a lot of dynamic levels, things that are changing or moving your levels, not a great choice. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a pretty good breakdown of what goes into making this system. But at the end of the day, it's basically... Uh, four new nodes, room, room group, portal, room manager, plus a new property added to visual instance, uh, plus some scripts and toolings to enable it. So this is going to give you the ability to basically tell the Godot renderer, hey, this is how my world is organized. Please use that to run faster, I guess, essentially is the simplest way you can put it. If you're interested in getting more, that there is a work in progress set of documentation out there. So you can get, you can get an introduction of how things work. Uh, you can get the basics, what each one of those new classes do, uh, what some of the definitions and limitations are. Uh, and we get into some of the more intermediate stuff, like how portals work. And then we finally get into the advanced stuff. So uh, callbacks in the monitor and so on. So if you want to get into using occlusion calling, Godot 3.4 beta 2 now has it built in. And there's also something, a work in progress for Godot 4, by the way. So if you're wondering about Godot 4, yes, it's going to have this functioning uh, functionality as well. Uh, now let's look at some of the other things that are included in Godot 3.4 beta 2. Again, beta, do not use in production. That's the entire idea here. Um, so reset track feature in the animation tool, iOS and Apple silicon fixes, uh, mono builds are now universal builds for support for both uh, x64 and arm 64 environments uh, files are now all um, 64 gigabyte even on uh, 32 gigabyte system so you can now have files bigger than 2.1 gig I don't know that's going to be too many people but for those that are uh, add frame delta smoothing options uh, we've got uh, crypto improvements, uh, HTML can now export as progressive web apps. Those are web apps that basically load instantly and then stream in the extra information they need over time. Uh, implement a Godot to JavaScript interface. Uh, that's nice. Uh, implement lossless WebP encoding. So that's really, sorry, there, there's actually a fair bit in this one. Backward, um, imp sorry, backport improved GLTF module Racine export support. That's actually going to be kind of nice too, because what you're going to have with GLTF, uh, which is a, a common interchange format, is one of the most appropriate ones to use in Godot. If you want to bring data in or out of Godot, GLTF is a great choice. And that is out the export support is new so what you could do is actually export your created in godot level to something like blender change it export it back as gltf and then move it back in uh, that's kind of nice but mind you keep in mind that would only keep the geometry stuff the textures the models that kind of stuff you're obviously not going to get your scripts exported in that case so um, it's a way of dealing with the model data only just Keep that in mind. Uh, GDF native support uh, and minimal handling for Unix sim links. Uh, notarization support when exporting from Mac OS on a Mac OS host. Options to clean, simplify convex hull generation from mesh. Added a ring emitter for 3D particles. Uh, fixed 2D moving platform logic for physics. Uh, other physics improvements. Again, the occlusion calling, probably the big story here. That's why we covered it first. Uh, fixed depth sorting of meshes with transparent textures. Added soft shadows to the CPU light mapper. Combined depth of field far and depth of field near passes. Import options to split vertex buffer streams. Auto uh, Fixed auto wrapping of CGK texts. Uh, added support for structs and Fragment to light variants, and, and that's shader improvement, language improvements and shaders. Uh, and improved streamlines for visual script node funks calls. That is the big stuff. We got a number of um, other little changes. Uh, I'll, of course, I'll link to this in the linked article down below. Also, if you want to go ahead and check it out, there is an up-to-date version of 3.2 beta 2 uh, online available here. Although, interestingly enough, while well, I'm hovering over it and looking at the link it's generating, it's 3.4 beta 1. So I think that, let's see if the link is just bad. Yeah, so the link is out of date. By the way, if you're on the Godot team, uh, your link is wrong. Uh, so a, there is an up-to-date version of it available right here. So if you want to just check out Godot online without having to download anything, you do have that option now uh, available here. So that is Godot 
4, beta 2. The big thing for me, at least, is the occlusion calling. Uh, it will theoretically lead to uh, performance improvements in the world of 3D. And that's one of those things a lot of Godot developers have been screaming for. So I'd be interested to see what you think of the uh, addition of occlusion calling portals, PVS, and all that stuff, and what else you thought of the 3.4 beta 2 release. Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.